The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory, that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, 
that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A blessed feast of the Most Holy Trinity to you. Today, Trinity Sunday, marks the end of the Easter cycle, those feast days and seasons that draw their timing and their pattern from the great feast of Easter, starting with Ash Wednesday and going through Lent and Holy Week, Easter and Easter Week and the Easter season, then the Ascension, Pentecost, and now Trinity Sunday. And so it is perhaps appropriate that we have today this reading from the third chapter of the Gospel of St. John, a reading that comes just before a reading that we had back during Lent, this interview between Jesus and Nicodemus, between a seeker and master, between the inquiring open heart and the God who has come to fill it up. There is great promise in Nicodemus. He reappears later as someone who has secretly been following Jesus, and he helps to anoint Jesus' body and see him buried after the crucifixion. So while we may not here have someone who is fully on board, he has questions, he has doubts, he is not willing to uproot his life and follow Jesus, he is nevertheless open enough to wonder open enough to inquire, open enough to hope that here in this Jesus there is something more than meets the eye, as indeed we know there is. So woven through this scene is the godhood of Jesus, his knowledge of the things of the kingdom as the one who has descended from the kingdom, his intimacy with the Father, and the presence of the Spirit which blows where it will. No wonder this reading is chosen for Trinity Sunday. So what can you say about the mystery of the Trinity? The temptation here is to back off of the mystery of the Trinity. It is also a temptation to say God is perfect, therefore God must be one, a singularity, whole and complete in himself. And a Christian would say, yes, God is whole and perfect, complete in himself, but part of that completion, part of that perfection is the capacity to love. Would we not agree the capacity to love is a perfection? Perfection demands love. Love demands relationship. And so that beautifully poetic doctrine of the church, God is love, says so much more than a, a saccharine hallmark sentiment. It tells us of the rich interplay of the three in one. The other question to address on Trinity Sunday, of course, is why does this matter? Okay, fine. So God is three and God is one. It is a mystery that we cannot wrap our heads around. We accept it out of love. Fine. Why do we care? Because we are made in the image and likeness of God. We are made for relationship. We find our truest self in giving ourselves away. We find our greatest good by attending to the good of another. We most closely approach divinity when we approach love. Our Lord says that the kingdom can only be seen by those born from above, and those born from above are those born by water and the Spirit. Everyone who has ever fallen in love, everyone who has ever held their infant child in their arms, knows that in that moment we are made new. People talk about it as if the world changes, but the reality is the world is the same. We change. We are made new. We are reborn when we love. The greatest of these loves being the love of God poured upon us in water, our baptism, when we are restored to grace in God. 
and the Spirit poured out upon us through the Word of God, the sacraments of the Church, the communion of the saints, living in us and through us in the world. To then activate that love, to act on it, to reach out in that love to those around us, is to see the kingdom, the kingdom made real in the act of generous self-giving. Why does the mystery of the Trinity matter? Because that mystery is at the heart of the mystery of ourselves. It is at the heart of the mystery of one another. It is at the heart of the mystery of life itself. And not to unravel that mystery, but to live that mystery, is the entire point of our lives. May you embrace the mystery this day and all days. May you follow the Spirit where it leads. May you answer the call of the Son born for you. And may you seek the Father who so loves you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.